You need to study for the MCAT, but you're anxious as all get out, guys. How can we move past our anxiety, put ourselves in a position of confidence, and also of execution to do well on the MCAT? That's what we're talking about today, guys. So here's the intro. Let's get right into it. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop, right? Get at it. No excuses. Just dominate. All right, guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett here, the study doc, and as always, I'm here to help you be what? More positive, more productive. Today, we're talking MCAT. I asked a question on my Instagram, TikTok, all platforms, but I asked a question on my stories today. I said, hey, listen, guys, let me know what your goals are for 2023. Let me know what you need help with so I can help you out. And I got some amazing responses, so I'm gonna address those today. And one of them is, hey, Dr. Pinesett, I'm preparing my MCAT. I think I have a good plan, but I'm so anxious that sometimes I'm paralyzed and I don't study like I should and I procrastinate. And this is a question and a comment and a feeling I get so often. How many of you guys out there get paralyzed into procrastination? And anxiety gets the best of you. I got so much to do. I don't know if I can do it, so I better not do anything, right? And we shut everything down. You've got to stop that. And the number one way you can stop anxiety in any situation, you can lower anxiety and increase confidence in any situation, including the MCAT, is to be maximally prepared. With the MCAT, the reason there is so much anxiety that surrounds it is because students don't put themselves in a position to be maximally prepared. Stick with me now. This is so important. When you go to study for the MCAT, you must respect the three biggest factors and components that determine your MCAT score. There are three of them and I'll cover them all today. And as we talk about those three components, right? The first being fund of knowledge, the second being your study skills, and the third being your testing skills, all three of those things are gonna determine how much you have to study for the MCAT and how well you can do. The only way to get a great MCAT score is to be high level in all three of those things. And the problem that so many students do that causes all this unnecessary anxiety and pressure for the MCAT is that they put themselves in an unrealistic, unwinnable timeline of MCAT preparation, right? You're a senior, you wanna apply this year, June is coming up, so you say, oh, I got two months, I'm gonna do it. I got three months, I'm gonna do it. Not taking into account that, wait a minute, am I a two month studying type of student or do I need more time? Do I need more preparation? And if we can ask ourselves some questions, some key questions about the three factors I just mentioned we're going to, in a second, it changes our entire outlook and our entire ability to perform when we're studying and also on the MCAT. So we have to take a look at ourselves and ask ourselves about each of these three areas and say how much time do I need to effectively prepare for the MCAT? And if we need lots of work, we need to give ourselves more time. And by doing that, we take the pressure off. We allow ourselves to see the actual steps that we need to take. Oh yeah, I got a lot of work to do, but I can see all those steps lined out over however many months these are, and I know I can get there. But if we use a short timeline, I don't see this pathway to success, and we get the anxiety that stirs up. So these three factors, the first one is that fun of knowledge. So I want you to ask yourself, sit down, say, wait a minute, as I make my schedules, I figure out when I should take the MCAT, what is my fund of knowledge? knowledge. What is the fund of knowledge? A fund of knowledge is the bank of information you have at your disposal to deploy on a test like the MCAT. You're going to hear this a lot in medical training. What is their fund of knowledge? The fund of knowledge is the information that you have at your personal disposal in your brain to utilize in a situation or on a test, right? As you get older in your clinical training, it's like clinical situations, but right now it's the MCAT. So I want to ask you, how is your fund of knowledge for the MCAT? How sharp are you? How much do you know about the topics on the MCAT? Ask your Yourself. Hey, have I been out of school for a long time? That's gonna hurt my fun of knowledge because it was so long ago I can't remember that stuff. Hey, how did I do in my classes? If I didn't perform well, odds are I didn't learn that material well then, so I definitely don't know it now, so my fun of knowledge will be weak. The third thing, ask yourself, listen, have I taken all the prerequisites to be prepared for the MCAT? Otherwise, I have gaps in my fund of knowledge. And as you go through those questions, you can see, oh wait, my fund of knowledge is low, medium, high, wherever it is on that spectrum. And you can say, listen, my fund of knowledge is low. It's been a long time since I've taken classes, I didn't do well to begin with, so my fund of knowledge is low, but that's not a defeatist thing. That's a thing that now we can plan for accordingly and say, listen, I'm not gonna do three months of studying. My fund of knowledge is weak. I'm gonna do six months, I'm gonna do nine months, I might even do 12 months, depending on just how weak my fund of knowledge is. And by doing that, I now can say, listen, I don't have to get caught up with Joe Smo, the brainiac over here who just got out of class, has got all A's. I can say to myself, well, listen, he's there and he's way past me. But by working for the next six months, nine months, I can catch him and we can create confidence through our timeline that way. Does that make sense everybody? If it makes sense to you right now, take a second like this video and let me know you understand what I'm saying right now about the importance of establishing a baseline of who you are as a student 
student, in particular, your fund of knowledge first. The second component we have to ask ourselves about is our studying skills. So with the MCAT, much like what makes the medical school difficult, what makes the MCAT difficult? It's a lot of information in a perceived tiny window of time for us to get at it. In medical school, that window really is small. In MCAT prep, we make the window small by rushing our MCAT prep, but you have to learn a lot, right? You have to do a lot of studying, a lot of learning. First of all, we have to understand, we create understanding first. Then once we create understanding, we have to remember that information and we have to remember it for a long time. We have that retention over the two, three, six, however long we're studying months until we get to the MCAT test day because there's so much information. And so how great of a studier you are is really gonna determine how quickly, from wherever your fund of knowledge is, how quickly you can get to a top level fund of knowledge that will allow you to excel on the MCAT. So how quickly can you take in information? How quickly can you make that information memorable so you can hold it and retain it for the whole time? That's gonna determine your length of your MCAT prep. And for you as a student, I want you to ask yourself, hey, am I a good student? Have I shown in the past my ability to learn things quickly? If not, it's not defeatist, but it just tells us we're gonna expand that timeline. I want you to ask yourself, hey, have I been a consistent high level student? So am I able to put multiple days successfully back to back in my studying? Or am I a master procrastinator where every other day is a missed day, right? I feel a uh, tickle in my throat, I can't study today. Ask yourself, what are your study habits? I also want you to say, okay, wait a minute. So yes, maybe I learn quickly or maybe I don't learn quickly. But once I learn something, how sticky is that material to me? And this is important as a sidebar. Right? I'm gonna, I always got to teach you guys a sidebar. For learning, there are two parts of learning. We got to take in, right, with the receptive learning. And then we have to have that retention part where we remember it, right? The key to remembering things well and remembering for a long time is organization, how we organize that material and creating a functional, personally meaningful understanding of that material. So if we can organize the information and we can stick it to something, I call it my material matching, that is meaningful to us, it allows us to hold that information for a whole lot longer. I talked about this on a previous episode of Slate Doc Show where I was talking to a Swedish memory champion and we got into some of these nuances of memory and how to do it. So check out that episode if you haven't already, but you have to be able to create that stickiness. That is not something, some people have a, a more gifted brain at baseline, right? They have a higher starting point, but the rest of us were able to build that capacity. It's a skill set to be able to create retention. And so this is encouraging. So if you say to yourself, listen, I'm someone when I study something, I can't remember. It's not because your brain is broken. It's not because you can't have the capability to do that. It's because you don't have the tools to organize the information, to make it meaningful, and to bring it into your brain and hold it and store it. And so that is a skill set that can be learned. And I teach a lot of this in my five pillars course, my five studying lessons, getting better grades, how to my material match. But it's so important for you guys to understand that's a skill and you can get there. But if you are not there right now, you need more prep time because you're gonna need more repetitions and you're gonna need more approaches to that material to be able to make it sticky. So that's gonna elongate your window. But if you elongate your window, and you recognize your tremendous capacity to become great students. We can all be superstar students, but we have to have techniques and we have to practice those techniques to become skilled studiers, high level studiers, and we can get them information very quickly. So fun of knowledge one. Number two is our studying skills. Do we all understand this? If we're good on this, like this video right now, let me know. Dr. Pinesa, you're spitting it today. I understand what you're saying because I've been confused about how long my MCAT timeline should be. And this is giving me tangible things I should check box. I should go down and say, listen, where is my MCAT prep and how can I get there? The third Third and final factor in your MCAT preparation speed and also how well you'll do in your MCAT test is your test taking skills. How many guys out there are terrible test takers? Is it the anxiety that gets you? Is it your inability to think in crunch time quickly? Is it your inability to read critically? Is it your inability to sift through large volumes of information? What's the issue? Are you a master test taker or are you not great at test taking? I myself am a master test taker. And again, it's a skill. I've worked on it actively to say, how can I attack tests? How can I take it to tests so they're not taking it to me? So because of that, right, what, what qualifies me as a great test taker? One, I'm fast, y'all fast. Why? Because one of the things that test makers do to make tests more difficult is they time crunch you. They make it so that, yeah, you know what? You could probably get this question right in a vacuum, but if it takes the average person five minutes, I'm going to give you two and a half. That's what the MCAT does. So if I'm a fast test taker, if you are a fast test taker, that means you are going to be a highly skilled test taker because they can't shorten the window enough to make you rush. So for me, I'm always out of my test first. When I took my board exams for anesthesia, I was out in half the time. Why? Because I'm rapid fast. That's the first sign. The second 
part of being a great test taker is fidelity. Meaning, can I decipher questions, get to answers on a consistent basis? So when I'm attacking the test with speed, am I not sacrificing my correctness and my ability to get the right answer by moving so fast? And so on the MCAT, ask yourselves, right? How many of you guys, you're so busy trying to rush through the passage, you skip over things. Trying to be too good through the fast of the passage that you miss the retention, you miss exactly what they're meaning, you get caught up in those double no's, like which is not not the correct answer, right? Those kind of things. That's sacrificing the fidelity of your test taking. So to be a high level test taker, you have to be not only fast, but you have to have high fidelity, meaning you can execute at that high level speed. Are you a great test taker? If not, you can develop that skill, but it's going to take more time. So in your MCAT prep, not only are you working on your fund of knowledge, right? You also have to work on that test taking aspect. So that's gonna be another layer and more time you're gonna have to put into your studying it's gonna elongate your MCAT window. And again, through all this, guys, the big takeaway, take this to note, no matter where you are as a student, with your fund of knowledge, your smartness, with your academic ability, with your studying, with your test taking, no matter where you're at, you can improve and you become the master. You become the dominant Dr. Pinesay. You can do that, but it takes work. It takes learning a strategy, then taking that strategy and practicing it to make it a skill. Your study skills, your MCAT test taking skills. And so if we take into all these accounts, we know to extend our window. The average MCAT prepper spends about three to four months preparing. So if you are a below average fun of knowledge, study skills, or test taking skills, you should spend more than that. To be safe, give yourself nine months, y'all. Give yourself 12 months just to focus on the MCAT and see how your anxiety drops. See how your confidence rises. See how you're able to be more consistent, more effective, get more into the flow of MCAT prep and put yourself in a position to get a great score after that time period. And I'll tell you this as I leave. And then I'll be gone. I'll be gone. I'll probably be out of here. If you're with me still, like this video right now. But I have never, in all the time that I've worked with students, I've never had a student who spent nine months or longer strictly focused on the MCAT and who was actually studying consistently. I didn't say studying a whole bunch, consistently. Every day, put in some hours for at least nine months. I've never had a student like that not reach their score goal. Facts, in all the years, I've been almost 20 years working with students on testing and studying, I've never had a student not reach their MCAT goal if they studied at least nine months and they were consistent. Can you give me five days a week consistently for nine months? If you can do that, you can get your MCAT score goal. I show you exactly how in my MCAT course, how to the MCAT that expensive prep class is the most affordable, most effective MCAT prep out there. I created it because students were like, man, Dr. P, you're kicking this knowledge, everybody needs this. So I put it together for you and it's amazing because I break the course, discrete stages of your prep. However far away you are, I allow you to create a personalized, effective, not only study schedule, but study plan for executing. Because at every stage, we have different goals. And then to meet each of those goals, we have specific strategies we want to get at to maximize our ability to reach those goals and prepare for the next stage. So that way, as we're ramping up right to the MCAT, we're at peak performance and we can dominate it, guys. So my MCAT course is available for you on my website. Go check it out right now. Learn some more. It's affordable, like I said, super affordable, and it's super effective for you guys as students. Have you enjoyed this video? Do you feel like, oh, you know what, Dr. Prince, thank you. I got a better grasp on what I need to do to prepare, to make my schedule, to have a timeline that's realistic to take the pressure off, but also put me in a position to succeed big time on the MCAT. If I've done that, if I've reached my goal, let me know right now, like the video, comment on the video, say, Dr. Prince, you hitting it today, you got me. My MCAT will be better because of this video. I appreciate you being here with me, guys. If you don't know already, subscribe to this channel if you're on the podcast right now. Hey, leave me a comment, let me know a rating, let me know this podcast is amazing. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you guys next time. How do we end each and every single video? No excuses, just dominate, guys. See you next time. That's it for another episode of the Study Doc Show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses, no more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, premedproductivity.com. Grab a free ebook. Sign up for every webinar. And if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life-changing courses or coaching programs. You have greatness inside you. Let me show you how to unlock it so you can dominate and make your dreams a reality. No excuses, just dominate.